Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Jeremy aka Uzara Jarambe back again with another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. And as mentioned in the previous video, today I'm going to be going over a fairly thorough team breakdown for free to play units and summonable units to help you guys get up to level 100 and beyond. I'm going to try to keep it as, as short as possible so we can jump right into it, keep it a short video. But anyway, with that, let's go ahead and jump in. I have found three teams that are really worth bringing into the event. Now, Every time you use a friend leader, I highly recommend this Extreme Int Cell because he is going to be um, the lead unit for the Android Cell Saga category. He's going to give key plus 4 HP attack 150% uh, and defense 170%. And then he also has his um, evolution, his transformation, whatever you want to call it. When he's below 30% health, he gets the full heal on the team as well. So even though he does have type disadvantage, um, he tanks pretty well, and you, you shouldn't really have to worry about that once you get past level 41. Um, but before that, he does well even still because you have the two int cells and the two tech cells that you'll be going against. Um, really and honestly, he's just all around. He'll, he'll be able to carry you through the event um, if you don't have any other good units. So anyway, let's start with the free-to-play team, and I'm going to be starting out taking out uh, level 100 with this. I'm be taking on this um, with this team to see... Uh, test a theory that a free play team can actually beat level 100 on this event. So let's start out with our lead is going to be the Int Krillin. You can pick him up from the Baba Shop using Battlefield Memory. He's a little spendy. Um, I have none of his paths unlocked and I don't have his super attack leveled up, but I've gotten him maxed out on hidden potential up to that point, which I believe is 41% without the um, bottom right path having any activation in it. So he's not going to be dealing massive numbers, but the reason why, obviously you want him for the lead. He's an Android Cell Saga, key plus 3 HP attack and defense, 120%, but the main thing is his passive really helps him out when he's on Android Cell Saga category teams, which this whole team is going to be that. Um, he starts out attack and defense 80%, he gets an additional 7%, per uh, ally that's Android Cell Saga. And then if he is in the first slot, he gets key plus four, and we're talking on the rotation. First slot as the attacker, key plus four. Second slot, key plus two. And then he is always gonna be guaranteed to launch an additional super attack because it's an uh, Android enemy we're going up against. So if you look through his passive, you'll see all that information. Um, really good unit to bring in. And obviously the no-brainer for the lead unit for this. If you don't have him or you don't have enough battlefield memory to buy him, um, you can also, we're talking on the global side, they gave us the uh, free-to-play Hercule, uh, the strength one for the tile-breaking competition against JP. We lost and got Hercule. He is, he does have type advantage when you get up past level 41, but um, I don't highly recommend bringing him in. He's Android Cell Saga, key plus 3 HP, attack and defense, 33%. Um, really, not much more to talk about there. But anyway, um, the other unit that I recommend getting rainbowed out, free-to-play, Super Saiyan Vegeta and the Super Trunks exchange card. Um, I have them, <coughs> excuse me, I have them Extreme Z Awakened and I have them rainbowed out. And once you get this exchange off, you can see once he's Extreme Z Awakened, key plus seven attack and defense 140%, and he slowly dwindles down as the turns go on, but you shouldn't take more than four or five turns to beat this event. You can get the exchange off for him and for the Goku Gohan unit after turn three. And when you get that Gohan exchange off, he gets a massive buff, and he is going to perform two additional attacks. High chance of performing critical hit when there's an Android Cell Saga enemy, which and uh, Cell is that. So, again, really good to use him there. And then also in, built into the Goku Gohan passive is they give Goku's family key plus two attack and defense 30%. So your Yardrak Goku is going to be able to take advantage of that as well. And if you look, uh, obviously his stun isn't going to be effective after, I believe, um, level... <clears throat> level 20 um, or sorry no it's gonna be level 10 is when so once you get to level 11 uh, cell can no longer be stunned so you can use that stun all the way up to level 10 but after that not really anything to be looking at but the good thing is is that if you put him in the second or third slot due to his passive he takes 59% uh, less damage if it's a normal attack and he counters so he won't be taking a lot of damage um, anytime, even if you're going against the physical cell. If he's in the first slot, he gets attack plus 59%, and then he has a high chance to evade. As long as he doesn't take a super attack on uh, level 41 and above, then he will be perfectly fine to take on the event. And the last uh, three units we're going to talk about here, obviously the first one's going to be the uh, the cell there, 
Why I bring him back into this is because he's going to be able to benefit from this Android 18. You can also buy her with incredible gems in the Baba shop because with her passive, um, she gets she obviously gets attack and defense 18% per Android ally. She gives all of the allies key plus two, every ally, key plus two, attack and defense 18%, and then your Android allies get an additional attack and defense 18%, so she really helps on buffing the team. Once you get past level 40, she also is, uh, she will have type advantage on the physical cell. So, um, why I say that is this LR, the LR androids will be able to benefit from the additional attack and defense buff that she gives, and so will the LR cell. So really, you've got some good synergy working out here, and uh, you're, you should be able to beat the whole event. I'm going to be taking on level 100 with these guys first, and um, we'll test it out, and I, I think we should have no problem beating it. But with that, we'll move on to the next two teams. Um, these are the summonable units teams. If you don't want to run a free-to-play team and you have these guys, this is a Kamehameha category team. If you don't have the LR uh, AGL Gohan, that was just released and you have this strength go on once you get him extreme z awakened he actually becomes a uh, kamehameha category lead and he does key plus three hp attack and defense 100 percent or if you don't want to run him on a kamehameha team you can also run him um, he does all types key plus three hp attack and defense 77 percent as his secondary leader skill so he's really a, a pretty good unit to uh, bring in for really any uh, lead if you don't have any of these other guys. But anyway, um, I'm not going to really go too much in depth. The only unit we haven't talked about so far, obviously you've got your Gohan who can transform if you get low enough in health after the um, after the fifth turn and you're below that 59% or sorry, below the 58% and then you've got the Android uh, ally which is going to be Cell. But anyway, uh, the only other one we haven't talked about is I'm going to bring in the Tech Cell. Uh, he's somewhat of a tank unit or somewhat of a tank and a nuke unit. Uh, built into his passive. You can also bring in the Strength Cell, um, and he can do good damage after level 40 because he will have type advantage. But anyway, nothing really too crazy to talk about there. Really good team. Um, but our third team is going to be the Android Cell Saga category. Obviously, with the LR Cell we talked about earlier, having that lead. And the only unit we haven't talked about on this team yet is the Android 16. So although he has a type disadvantage on levels 40 and above, he actually has a high chance to guard all attacks. So really not worth worrying about. And plus, he will give all allies key plus 3 attack plus 50% if you have Gohan attacking in the same turn. So he's really good to bring in in that aspect. He does have a farmable super attack. I haven't farmed it out all the way. Um, but another, uh, sorry, going to backtrack a little bit, The with Android 16 being brought up, the free-to-play team can also run the free-to-play int Android 16. Um, he actually will be good all the way really up to level 40 because his passive is going to give him uh, minus 55% on damage received when he has his guard activated. So levels 11 through 20 and levels 31 through 40, you have tech cell. He's really good for that. Um, when you go against levels 1 through 10 and 21 through 30, cell shouldn't be dealing on enough damage to really make a difference. But I don't recommend bringing that um, Android 16, the free-to-play one, in after level 40 because he won't be able to take advantage of his passive. So anyway, enough rambling on. Let's go ahead and let's run this free-to-play team level 100 of the cell raid. Let's see what we can do here. So we're starting out with our strength units, which is really nice. And you know what? Even though it's a type disadvantage, you can see I'm going to be placing that LR cell in the way of some attacks because he just tanks really well. And that's why I tell you to bring him in for a friend unit. So you'll see here in a second, once he takes some damage, he's not going to be really taking too much to be worried about. Not double digits, really and honestly. And he's even going to take a super attack. We're going to see how much damage he's going to take. I'm not even worried about it you can see it's going to be another double digit. So even though he has type disadvantage, I'm telling you this is the friend unit to bring in no matter what. And when I'm saying type disadvantage is levels 40 and above, and he's still dealing a crazy amount of damage there. So you can see this free-to-play team is going to be able to two, two rotation, or not even two rotation, two units, and level 100 is beat. The free-to-play team is absolutely able to get all the way up to level 100, and beyond. Once you get to level 101, all your hidden potential orbs and your dozing Elder Kaiser are no longer available and you just go into training items. So 
if you can beat it with that free-to-play team, you can beat it with pretty much any other team we have on here. I'm not really going to run through these guys and show you. These are just the team builds I was going to show you, just so you have some ideas of who to build based on what units you have. Um, but yeah, there you go. Level 100 of the event beat. We'll even take on level 101 just to show you it wasn't a fluke. This team can make it all the way up. So let's go ahead and we'll we'll keep the uh, we'll keep the tech unit there. We'll go ahead and swap out for the Android 18, and we'll go ahead and hit with Kremlin on the last slot there. So there is no unit that is effective against defending on this event. It's only effective when attacking. At least what it says is the only units effective for attacking is going to be the uh, Android Cell Saga, all types, extreme and super. So, you can see we took a little bit more damage than we did on level 100, but uh, that's just because we got a super attack off on a unit that doesn't have really any tanking built into his passive. So unfortunately, after level 40, this Krillin it does have type disadvantage all the way up past level 100, so he's not going to be dealing a crazy amount of damage, but he is there to um, obviously be your main lead for your free-to-play units, and um, anything up to level 40, really, and honestly, he's going to do an amazing job. So let's go ahead and get these guys going here, keep them there. And we'll go ahead and we're not going to get a super attack off with Cell on the last slot either. That should be alright. This way we should be able to run through all of our units if we don't finish them off this turn. You can see all of the units on this team in action. And we're only going to take 11,000 damage. Nothing too crazy. And almost 2 million damage without a crit on those guys. Obviously one of the best units to bring into this for your free-to-play units. Alright, so now we get to see the Yardrat Goku. And we're going to get to see the exchange for the Gohan. And uh, I really, I'm, I'm a fan of the exchange units here. Um, really awesome. Gives a little bit of new, uh, a new dynamic to the game. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and we'll put Gohan in that first slot. And he should be able to finish it off. No problem. So you can see he's going to be able to tank, take only double digit damage, well, triple dim digit, barely past 100 there, but he should be able to finish this off with his passive being boosted. A regular attack for 1.5 million damage, absolutely possible to take it on. So there you go, levels 100, levels 101 beat with the free to play team. No problem, you guys should be able to go through this. And again, it takes no stamina, so if you do take a super attack in the wrong spot with your units, you should be able to go. But uh, yeah, hopefully the free-to-play team and the two uh, summonable unit teams that I showed you helped out. Hopefully the unit breakdown kind of helped you if you're having troubles deciding. And like I say, this these teams can be used all the way from level 1 all the way to level 100 and beyond, as you can see. Hopefully it helped you out. Uh, thanks for checking out the video today. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel, got a lot more content coming out, and I'll catch you on the next one. Signing out.